All right, I'm K20.com with uh, Chris Wardeski. Um, Chris, uh, you've been with the IFL. You just last fought uh, Nate Lamott in uh, April. Um, and now IFL, of course, has uh, gone under and you're a free agent. So tell us what you've been up to and offers you've been getting and where you're going to be fighting. No, I'm not a free agent no longer. I'm, uh, I'm signed a contract with Affliction. I'm going to be fighting on the next show in January, on the 24th. Again, it's Stan Lozon, so I'm really excited about that. It's going to be a big show and probably the biggest one, you know, in the United States. So uh, I'm really excited, man. So did you get a lot of offers from different companies? Why did you choose Affliction? Um, just, you know, my management team, they, North County Fight Club, they, they went around. Um, a lot of people came up to them. Um, and uh, I went to the first Affliction show and it really appealed to me. and. and uh, I like I like the format they had, the show they put on, and I think it's a good home for me. Yeah. Was there any preference for the ring over the cage? Not necessarily, but I, I, you got to fight where you got to fight, regardless. But um, I fought mo almost my entire career. I've only had one fight in the cage. My whole career has been in, in, in a ring through TKO and the IFL. Um, I'm real comfortable with it, and uh, yeah, I, you know, it kind of like feels like home. Yeah. So this past weekend you were fighting in Japan in this uh, shoot fighting S Cup uh, tournament. Yep. So how did that go? G uh, good, not, but you know, not too bad. Uh, I lost in the first round uh, decision. Um, I thought for sure I won, but uh, I fought Shishida. Uh, he's one of their champions in uh, shoot boxing, um, and I thought for sure they had had me win the fight. Went to went to the scar went to the cards. You know, but in the first round of the tournament. Um, they gave it to him, um, but he, he's their boy, you know what I mean. Um, they, they, they like me, they, they want to have me back, and, and uh, they're real happy. So Japan was an amazing experience, and uh, you know, I can't wait to go back. Yeah, no doubt tough getting a decision in Japan sometimes when you're facing a hometown boy. Absolutely. Um, so flying over to Japan, was it, was it the first time for you? So was there jet lag affecting you at all, or was yeah, there a um, difference there? Yeah, it was... It was different. We we came out a couple only a few days before. We, you know, we just tried to get in, in and out uh, with the fight. We didn't want to come too too early, where where you would hit that jet lag. So I, I tried to time it. You know, sleep the whole way there. You know, get there, train immediately, and 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 try to adjust my my you know my my sleep pattern to the to the time. But it was it was different. Um, but. You know, it was it was an experience of a lifetime, and you couldn't couldn't yeah. pass it up. So, and you've been fighting like five times a year, you know, since you've been 18. So, in this year, you fought once, and you fought the shoot fight. Uh, so, what have you been doing with your spare time this year? Uh, I've opened up a gym myself, Mark Hominick, and Sam Stout. We've uh, took the team Tompkins gym that Sean left uh, for us, and uh, we've expanded it to the Adrenaline MMA Training Center, um, and that's a new home. It's a third. 11,000 square feet in London, Ontario's um, you know ultimate you know athletic and MMA training facility. So that's that's what's been keeping me busy. I, I I've had a few fights pulled out from underneath me, like I said, with um, the Affliction show with the IFL. Um, both times I was ready to fight, you know, prepared already in, into camp, and the fight would be pulled out from underneath me. I'm very happy that I had the opportunity to, to compete. I'm injury free. I feel good, and uh, I can't wait, you know, to get back in it. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been keeping busy, you know, between teaching and training, and I'm uh, just trying to work on improving my game in in the areas that you know I need to work on. So it's been it's been a, some meaningful, uh, productive time between fights. Yeah, and I think that you had a right hand that was bothering you last year, so it must have been good. Um, it's healed about. up. I'm healed up. I'm ready to go. I, I'm fortunate. I'm really fortunate. I have no injuries. Fortunate, you know. I don't have a mark on me. I fought two days ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? You couldn't tell you're fighting. Yeah. Exactly. So, and you, so are you still affiliated with the, the Team Tompkins then? Team been, Tompkins is my home, um, you know, and uh, the Adrenaline Gym is, is the home of Team Tompkins in London, Ontario. But, my, you know, like I said, our core group uh, of me, Sam, and Mark, we all still travel to the Extreme Couture Gym in Las Vegas, um, and we train under under our, our head coach, our head trainer, Sean. He, he's the head trainer there. And, um, you know, we're, we're always a family, and uh, I'm going back, you know, real soon to get, start getting ready for affliction. Yeah, 
So now you're here in Winnipeg after flying in from Japan. Um, so what are you doing here? Uh, I'm here at a corner. Uh, two, two fighters of mine, you know, students of mine and training partners, uh, Ron Black and uh, Thiago Tavares. Uh, they train with me at the Extreme Couture in Toronto. Um, and I think two guys are going to perform awesome. You know, they, they've prepared really hard. They've been getting ready for a long time. And, and it, it's going to show, you know, on fight night. Well, cageplay.com, thanks you a lot, uh, Chris Nesky, and uh, best of luck in your fight in uh, January with uh, Daniel Zong. Thank you, guys. Thanks.